by now you have heard everyone and by everyone, I mean, everyone and their mom literally talk about this. You have heard your house plants, your garden gnomes, your favorite childhood pets from their puppy heaven graves come out to weigh in on the Will Smith hot ass mess. But guess what, bitch? You've yet to hear the cancel me baby take on it. And lucky for you today, it's your day. It is your day. And like your latest F boy from hinge, Tinder swindler, whatever the F you want to say. Okay. And by the way, by the way, if he didn't call you by now, bitch, he ain't calling you back. Okay. But like that guy, I'm going to give you a little tease. So what do we have in store today? We have the one and only, like I said, cancel me, baby. Take We have some twisty turny, like Chris Nolan could never some twisty turny shutter Island shit going down of events. All right. We have a little experience that I've had mm -hmm, with award show security up close and personal and the time that I remember the shutter Island. Yeah, I know the time I interviewed, get a load of this. Okay. Only in the cancel me baby verse, sweetheart. <laughs> I'm a little deranged. I didn't sleep much because like the ghost of Chris Rock's jaw was haunting me, but we're going to go for it anyway. Uh, yes. The time that I interviewed the world, one of the world's most high profile self-help spiritual guru men about what other than men and violence. I shit you not at an event for Jada Pinkett's Fred table talk. Literally, I am not kidding. I basically had just got off her lap, talked to this guy three years ago, and now here we are. Nostradamus is rolling in his grave. Like he could never have seen this coming. And how dare he? Because it's about to go down. So with that said, I don't know about you, but my nip, my nipples are hard and my panties are excited. All right. So let's go. And by the way, I've missed you all. Oddly enough, I'm a little bit jet lagged still because I spent the last week in California, but also like everything is a vortex. Like they are still living out there. Like it is March, 2020. So yeah, hence, <laughs> hence the no sleep. I blame it like everything else on California. <laughs> All right. So this shit all went down. Yes. Because like, I am a little jet lagged and I was hoping I'm like, all right, hopefully this is an easy week, but no, but no, again, I made the mistake of thinking the Oscars was going to be another snooze fest. I'm like, I'll have it on in the background while I literally do anything else while I count the crumbs in the bottom of my cheese. It's bag while I literally knock over a pile of shit just to put it back together again, which is what I used to do, by the way, fun fact, when I was in an employee at Abercrombie kids, not even Abercrombie and Fitch, the bootleg kid version. So I know it well. And I was like, I'll have the shit on in the background. And here comes Will Smith ambushing on, you know, the jaw of Chris Rock. That is my Sunday night and week. Okay. So what's cool about this episode is like I said, you have been seeing everybody talk about it already. So I kind of like that my apps drop on hump day, because again, like we need something to get our juices flowing to get our, you know, content bone or something. And it was kind of fun for me to like, see it all. Cause so much has, and continues to play out. I mean, this is not a news story that just roll over and dies. Like this shit is like the, I don't know if you want to call it a gift, but it is the situation that keeps on giving. So it's been really interesting to see it play out. Like I said, everybody and their cousin and their goldfish has something to say. So you all know the drill. I mean, really, we don't have time to kill. I already took longer on that intro than I wanted. Um, but we're watching kind of two sides unfold, right? So as we all know, Will Smith, like, I don't something like, I don't know if it was the ghost of Mike Tyson, even though he is still alive and well, like something possessed him. He went up, smack Chris Rock, curses him out over a joke about how Jada looks, which by the way, let's all just acknowledge this. I mean, I'm going to get into the comedy of it all in a second, but 
he references, I can't wait to see you in GI Jane too, because of her head shaved. And let's just say like, first of all, GI Jane Demi Moore was hot. So if anything, a lot of people are like, this is a compliment. And we've all seen Jada with short hair for so long. I just want to go on record and say this. I do not think Chris, I mean, how I didn't even know. I don't think Chris Rock did a medical deep dive into Jada Pinkett's alopecia, which is a condition that you lose your hair. Again, if you don't know this, like what have you been doing with the last four days of your existence? But all that goes to say, you know, I I just, it's a joke. It's a joke. I do not think it was an attack on, you know, a health condition, this, that like could be, I mean, think about it. Like when you're sitting front row in a standup, the first thing the comedian is going to do is take a look at you, your physical appearance and shit on you. Like it is what it is. Okay. So that was that on that. Will loses his shit, slaps Chris Rock. Chris Rock is like shook obviously. And okay. It was just, it's so shocking viscerally on so many levels and your girl here, she's seen a lot of shit. Okay. So the most stunning part is how the night continues to go on. Like nothing happened and also leave it to Hollywood because they're so controlling. Like they continue to go on the sh- with the show, like robots, like nothing happened. But, like poor Questlove is trying to give literally the acceptance speech of his dreams, like getting through tears and everybody is like literally building a time machine so they can go back five minutes. Like no one gives a shit, but the, the Academy, the, the broad telecast, whatever, broadcast telecast, whatever you want to call it. It keeps on going about like nothing happened. Meanwhile, Will Smith sits back down, gives this like self-indulgent virtue signaling speech, crying for literally 18 hours and continues to dance and party his troubles away at the Vanity Fair Oscar party. Now, I just want to say like, that is another thing that's so shocking because how, like, how does this happen at the Academy Awards. And then you just like go on to like, again, dance, (laughs) dance the night away. I'll have, you know, so one time when I was at the Emmys, okay. Like unlike Will Smith, I've had about with event uh, award show security. Okay. So one year I was at the Emmys and I kind of pretended to be a seat filler because I was there for us weekly. So we would be immersed in the crowd I'm talking like front row shit. Okay. And there's a picture like everything. I have the receipts. So get up, check up on it as Beyonce would say, okay, get up in there. And I'm hopping and bopping all around. I'm talking seat, you know, row five, I'm talking, you know, seat seven B like all this shit, because I'm trying to get in the nitty gritty. And I couldn't even appreciate it at the time because I was right next to the cast of stranger things. And I hadn't started watching it yet. Had it been now, I probably would have like Oh, I was just about to make an inappropriate joke. I forgot their children. Never mind. But you get the point. Okay. And so this security guard is on to me. He's like, who is this blonde bitch hopping and bopping on my territory? Like she owns the place. So they caught on. They were like, cause they saw me, you know, moving around all the seats, trying to hobnob with all these celebs, you know, the Mrs. Maisel cast and this, that, the other thing, like probably other shows I don't watch. And so they literally pulled me out of the audience, pretty much by my rented gown train and <laughs> They were like, bitch, do not let us see you on this side of the sun today again. Like, ta-ta. Literally, they kicked me out. Caught on, kicked me out. But it worked out because I ended up basically hiding out in the bathroom backstage and got even better stories. Yeah, like literally, basically holding Sandra O's dress and Elizabeth Moss's, you know, clutch as they were pissing themselves. So there you go. You know, stars are just like us. So the joke's on you to the security man. But anyway, the point is these people mean business apparently, except for when it comes to Will Smith. Okay. So, and, and who knows, you know, if they had kicked him out, you know, like they would with anybody else who would have pulled that maybe just maybe like me, they would have even had, a, he, maybe Will would have had an even better night than giving, you know, the 27 hour speech that no one asked for, but also had the audacity to give him a standing ovation. We're going to talk about that. So that all goes to say, it's been really interesting to see all, you know, the two sides play out. There's, I feel like there's one side that's defending him. They're like, she's defend. they're defending. He was defending her honor and da, 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 all this. Then you have the other side of people, of course, like two Americas, what a time who just think that this was absolutely unacceptable, double standard, abhorrent, um, 
Okay. Maybe I'm a little strong, but you get the gist and we're in the time of extremes, right? So nothing's off limits, no holds bar. And even as soon as I saw it, before I saw the reaction, I was with the ladder. I just couldn't believe it. And I did, I thought it was completely, I had thought it was no class. I thought it was completely narcissistic entitled. Like, can I think of any more descriptive words, but you get the point. It's like elitist, um, self-absorbed, unnecessary, just with no class. I just thought it was completely unacceptable. And further, the part that really pisses me off is how it's so crazy because like the, you would think this would be like <clears throat> the PC culture's dream event because you have like the girl from West side story, like the first openly, you know, Latina queer woman win an award. You have Troy Kotzer, the first deaf man win an award, you know, Coda with the deaf man wins the best picture. But like this guy had to steal all their thunder and make it about him. So unnecessary as if he and Jada haven't taken punchlines about them literally every five milliseconds for the past, like three decades, like give me a break. So that's, what's really shitty about it. And the reason I found it like so self-absorbed and disgusting, not only that overshadowing, <clears throat> I mean, call a word shows what you want. You, you know, you may say it's, Oh, a bunch of like elitist rich people, you know, jerking each other off with their awards, <laughs> like whatever, but it is a night to celebrate their work, you know, whether you think it's hogwash or not. And so it's like, who are you to completely overshadow all that? And you knew, come on, like you had to have known it was going to make people stop in their tracks. It was so shocking. You know what I mean? So I just think that's completely shitty. And on top of it, okay, the bigger picture, it's like, you look at what's going on in the world. You look at what's going on in Ukraine, which by the way, Mila Kunis is who's Ukrainian three seconds. This was her. She's like, I'm like, mom, mom, come here. You're actually going to want to watch this. Okay. Cause Mila was going to say something for Ukraine. She's like, you know, all the people in their resilience. Okay. Here's Reba McIntyre. I was like, bitch, are you for real right now? Again, just Ugh, like, ugh, I would just love to see these people like boots on the ground, making a difference. I just felt like that was so cheesy. And so like kind of pathetic. It's like, here's Mila Ukrainian immigrant in a gown saying two things and then introducing it just, again, it just goes into the whole, we're used to it, right? Like the Hollywood fluff lead is pathetic shit. But that was my bigger issue is that you see all this going on in the world. And you're going to take this night that we know millions of people are watching and literally get into some petty fight and make it about you. Again, it's just so like typical, disgusting Hollywood um, elitist. And what was even grosser to me is the fact that, I don't know if you guys saw this, like there's so much about this that people I'm shocked aren't talking about because the whole thing like (laughs) remains to be, you know, anything anyone can think about, but he went on after on Instagram and they've, they're since deleted. I'll put up the screen grabs now, but he says things like he's all proud of it. He's like, yeah, Jada and I getting, you know, invited to this fancy show just to stir shit up like that kind of thing. Then he's at the vanity fair Oscar party, literally having a conga line with singing all his songs to, uh, you know, with his Oscar to all his songs and celebrating dancing the night away. Like nothing had happened. Happened. And even his son, tweet, who I've also met, I've met basically this whole family, like who ha- honestly, who hasn't, I'm surprised I wasn't like in a threesome with them, but, um, who tweeted like, this is how we do it. So clearly like no remorse, no nothing. And Will Smith ends up coming out with this really sad excuse for an apology saying what, like the next day. And we all know, like, listen, I don't think you were thinking about this apology when you were crying in a canoe of your own tears and an acceptance speech, two seconds later, trying to get us to feel bad for you. Even the Serena Williams, um, dad who he, Will Smith played that one in the Oscar. He even came out and being like, what the fuck was this shit? Like, again, embarrassing to them too, like embarrassing all around. Right. But I don't think you were thinking of this apology then. I don't think you were thinking of it, you know, when you were doing the Macarena, you know, with your Oscar on your head, like at the Vanity Fair Oscar party. It's just such bullshit. It's such a way to save face and it's just so insincere. So that is that on that. Okay. And I think that it also says so much about, and a lot of people are saying this because something like where I'm going with all of this today, because everyone has weighed in on this, I feel like 
is the bigger picture about this that a lot of people and Hollywood are missing, but leave it yet again. Okay. To the blonde with the brains at the canceling baby show to bring it to your attention. Okay. But what a lot of people are saying is that this is just our sensitive culture personified. You know, Bill Maher said it. A lot of people have said it. It's like, this is Twitter personified. You don't like a joke. You don't like what someone says. So you go up and literally assault them. I mean, it literally is Twitter. And what's so shocking to me about this whole thing is that there are so many, like, this is the part even (laughs) more, like Chris Rock is still reeling in his dressing room. And the part I'm reeling over, you know, right next to him side by side, like as his janitor, as his, you know, snack runner is the fact that I, so many mainstream people that I never normally agreed with. I was like, absolutely. You know, the ladies of the view, Joy Behar, you had like Rosie O'Donnell, um, even other people, you know, me, not that she's a comedian, but like Maria Shriver, Jim Carrey, we all know that sermon that is just like, what's gorgeous. Um, trying to think, you know, Patton Oswalt, um, Amanda Seals, like all of these people, Howard Stern, he's another one, like, again, never normally agree with him these days, but when he came out, he's like, where the fuck was security? Anyone else, this would never fly. So many people, um, said this and I was like, thank, thank God. And I was shocked. And I'm going to get into why I was shocked in a minute, which like is a little tricky territory. I'm, I'm sweating a little, but we're going to go there. Cause that's what we do. Okay. But the comics are shaped. Oh, Kathy Griffin. That's another one. That's another one who, again, like normally wouldn't agree with. She was like, what does this say? So now this is why comics are fucking shaking because they're like, comedy is fair game. It is the ultimate equalizer. So do I have to be afraid of, you know, performing at, you know, Timmy's 10th grade birthday party. And (laughs) next thing I know, I get socked in the face by his classmate because you know what I mean? It's like that idea. It's like, so now is this setting? Like, what does that say? What kind of precedent does this set that if you don't like someone's joke, you literally just go up and assault them and then have no accountability or punishment. That's the part that's so shocking. And why I say it's such a double standard because if this think about it, okay. Like I said, I mean, hell look, you saw, I tried to sit even somewhat close to Millie Bobby Brown and you all heard what just happened. I mean, really, can you imagine if like anybody like a C list sitcom guy or, you know, a Z list soap opera star or, you know, Bella Thorne's uh, makeup artist, you know, like if anybody had gone up and done that, they would literally be escorted out, condemned a whole thing, never, ever work in Hollywood again, especially these days. We know that. And that's why I say there's a double standard. And so that's why I think comedians are so pissed because they're like, there's no accountability. And then the Oscars end up coming out with some bullshit thing a day later. That's like, we condemn this. We're doing an investigation, which what is there to investigate? Like we, we saw it with our, with our own eyes, like, just call inspector gadget because this case is done. Like, are you joking? So that's why a lot of comedians are pissed because they're like, okay, here we go. Like we, you, you know, just let this slide. And so this is the part I want to get into quickly um, before I get more into the idea of like men and violence. Like we're seeing it like Nick Lachey, are you good? I'm going to get into Nick Lachey in a second, but also like, let's again, like this is cancer maybe. So this is what we do. And you know, If I get dragged, y'all are coming with, but I think the elephant in the room too, that no one seems to want, well, no, some people are discussing it is, um, the race card, right? Blatant, what we can see like a black man assaulting another black man on a huge, you know, wide worldwide stage. That's why I was surprised because it, it is such a delicate sub, like we all know this, right? It's such a delicate subject right now. And I feel like I was surprised that so many mainstream people came out and condemned this because number one, and this is the first thing again, before I saw all the back, you know, the hoopla going on on the internet, I'm sure like many of you, the first thing I thought, and I was like, here we go. Like perpetuating the stereotype, um, with black men and violence and all of this, which I'm going to share, um, well, I won't share the whole thing, but before I shot this episode, my friend sent me a great piece by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And he says this, he's like, this doesn't help number one women. Cause it looks like they can't, they're helpless and they can't defend themselves, but also it just perpetuates the stereotype about the black community. So that's why I was so shocked. So many people came out and condemned him because number one, 
I feel like people don't want to come out and say something bad about a high profile black man, which is why I appreciated Kareem's piece so much because he's right. It's like, it does perpetuate a, a stereotype. And I know that these, I know for a fact, these are conversations that are happening behind closed doors. And I wish that people would talk about this more, but, and then you have, like, I saw this one black commentator and he's like, you know, I just think that white people are so uptight about this because they can't stand the idea of like a powerful black man. And I don't agree with that at all. I mean, we had a black president for eight years, like recently. So the idea of a black man in power, like, I just, I don't think that I don't think that that's it at all, but that is like, what is so interesting to me is that people are like fiercely, fiercely defending it for that reason and not really looking at the nuance like Kareem did. And I wish that, you know, that they had and further though, than the race component, I think is, and this is what I mean when I say double standard, like race component aside, although that's a thing that people obviously, you know, observed and like, like, unless you're Helen Keller, um, is the elitist part. So people were saying, you know, I think it actually might've been in Kareem's piece, but he said, would the same reaction or would the Academy just sit back and do nothing if Brad Pitt, you know, went up and hit Ricky Gervais, something like that. And I honestly think probably it would be the same outcome. And this is where I think race isn't you know, necessarily a part of it because it's that idea. That's what I mean about the double standard. It's like elitism. It's what I was talking about before about, you know, Millie Bobby Brown's, you know, understudy of the stunt double, like if it were anyone else, but it's like, no, this idea of the untouchable elite, powerful, wealthy person. Um, that's why I think, again, even if you were a D list, you know, in a Sonic commercial, I think that you would have been fucked. Like, I think that there's something where, you know, the elite are protected. And that's what I mean when I say double standard and it's so, such bullshit. And we all know it, um, especially because, you know, Hollywood is so vocal about, you know, violence all the time, which is also like, I'm not even going to go down this path, but it's so interesting to me how so many stars who are um, so vocal about against violence as they, you know, as you should be. Right. But it's so funny how they use it to capitalize, like with really violent movies and stuff like that. So we love Hollywood hypocrisy. What a moment. And I love what Jim Carrey said. It was so true. He said, Hollywood are, is so spineless because how could you watch what unfolded just unfold and then proceed to give this man a standing ovation. And he said it perfect. He's like, Hollywood is no longer the cool kids club. And it's just not, it's like, are you guys pathetic losers with a capital L L to the forehead, the whole thing? No. So this brings me to, you know, men, the idea of men and violence that I want to get into quickly. So I think it was either the same night or maybe the night after um, Nick Lachey got into a little tip. Like these men just are out here and they don't know how to act. Okay. Nick Lachey like went after this female in her car. It looks like they were on Rodeo drive, kind of like a paparazzi taking photos of him on her, her phone. And you see video of him and he's literally physically trying to go in to her car you know, snatch it like that game that you go and no one ever fucking wins this, but it's the game at arcades and it snatches the toy and then it just slips through your fingers. Yeah. That's what happened to him. And she was so quick. I don't know the name of it. Maybe you guys can help me out the drop something. I forget the claw thing. And he's calling her all these names. He's like, pussy motherfucker. Like, bro, are you good? And again, it's like kind of disturbing to watch. It's like, are you okay? And then same thing. He comes out the next day. He's like, I've been in this game for years. And she wasn't even in his face. She was literally parked in her car. You can see the whole video. So it, it was just interesting seeing this play. He's like, I've been in this game for years. I know how it works. There's no excuse. Like, but then he said something interesting, which is like to TMZ, you know, don't push a false narrative and call me violent, blah, blah. But it's kind of like, but aren't you like, you just went in and try to snatch this lady's you know, personal device as if you were a housewife snatching, you know, someone's poor wig off. I mean, it's like, really? So that was what was so interesting to me because we're seeing this happen over and over and over. And this is not the first people, I mean, really like men violent. I mean, who would have thought honestly, like history, what, what a time, what, what a concept. So this is something I also dug up and I'm shocked 
that this clip hasn't gone more viral considering how obsessed everybody is rightfully so with the story. This is not the first time that Will Smith has assaulted somebody at a Hollywood gathering. I know. So I saw this, he slapped kind of in the same manner, a reporter on the 2012 carpet. I think it was like the men in black revival, probably that no one asked for premiere. And you see them after the car, after their interview and this as a red carpet reporter, like this is something that happens. There's so many times when you have a good interview and they'll go in to hug you or just, like it, go on myself, go on, talk to me, Taylor. It's, it's constant. It's almost in every interview, you know, when you feel like you connect with somebody. So he's talking to this guy, I think he was with AP or something. I don't know. And they go in for a hug and the guy looks like he's tr- kind of trying to like kiss him on the cheek, but it's not like he's trying to make out with him. I don't know what happens so fast, but Will Smith like loses his fucking mind backs up and s- literally slaps the guy across the face. And again, it's so shocking because like his publicist, everyone's around. And by the way, I've worked with his publicist before <laughs> another story. If you know my Jennifer Garner story, way back then. Okay. Reference, see it in the footnotes, but everyone just stands by and watches. And I can't even kind of like Chris rock, which by the way, what a class act for holding his shit together and really quick back to the race component. So someone said they talked to maybe, Oh, it was Bill Maher. I think who was talking to a friend of Chris rocks at the after party at the at vanity fair. And I'm butchering this story, but the essence is that they said that Chris had said or felt, or maybe they said, but either way, like about Chris keeping his composure and just keeping it moving, that he had the whole black community on his shoulders. So to kind of keep it together, not that anyone should be in that position, but just what a class act, you know, what a class act. I can't even imagine being in the position of that reporter because I've had public, I've had celebrities do pretty gnarly things and I'm always shake it up. Like you can't not be shaken up because there's people all around They're high profile, they're publicists, they're this, they're that. I mean, I was pretty shaken up the time Luke Hemsworth, which is the third Hemsworth brother that literally no one knows. Okay. Shit on me. What was like, so offended by the stupidest question I asked about his brothers. I was like, Oh, are you guys competitive? Like brother rivalry, something stupid blew me off in front of the entire red carpet. And then all the other red carpet reporters were pissed at me. Cause he wouldn't talk to anyone else that felt I was, and things like that would happen literally every time I went to do an event. And I did one basically five times a week. So you do the math, right? Because they can be such egomaniac assholes and it leaves you feeling shaken because you're like, this is my job my professionalism. So the fact that this reporter kept their shit together is huge, right? So again, Will Smith, I don't know where you get off, but I actually do know where you get off because clearly you have been getting away with this shit and everyone you see it then 10 years ago, everyone just stands by and watches. So here's the trippy part that you all have been waiting for, how this has all come really full circle. So believe it or not, I've said it once. I've said it before. Call me the wizard. Call me Oz. Okay. You're the lion and I'm the tin man because all roads, all yellow brick roads, all red carpet travesties seem to lead to the show. So I've met Jada a few times. I actually posted a photo of the first time I met her when she was first premiering red table talk. And I made a joke about it, which only half of people seem to grasp, but That's okay. We'll talk about that at a a later, later time. For those of you who need explaining, God help your soul. I made a joke about Will having a Napoleon complex and having a tiny penis, hence having the lash out like this at the Oscars. So I love meeting Jada. I really did. She, me, I had even posted at the time, um, you know, I'm inserting myself into your family, Willow and Jaden, like she's just makes you feel so like, that's why I think red table talk was so successful because she really makes you feel, I didn't feel like she was pretentious. I just felt like she was someone I would want to hang out with. Like, so, so cool. Now, the second time I met Jada was about a year or two later when they were premiering season two, get a load of this. She did a Q and a, it was a nice little brunch, a whole Hollywood scene, right? 
And I see Jay Shetty in the audience. Now Jay Shetty is, has like millions, like a cult following. He used to be a monk turn. Now he's this like spiritual self-help guru. Like I said, millions of followers and is huge. And I see him in the audience. I pull out my selfie stick because bitch, that's what we do. And at the time, oddly, like, what are the chances of this? Okay. Not only was it at an event for and with Jada Pinka, Pink, Pinka, Pinkett Smith, literally, I might as well just have been like giving her a piggyback ride. Okay. I talked to like a self-help, you know, societal guru and about all things, but men and violence that, and now we're seeing this play out. Like that is the kind of shit that you cannot fake. And that is the kind of shit why you come here to cancel me, baby. And the reason that I talked to him about men and violence is because it was on my mind. I think something had happened at the time. There was another shooting, like just something awful. And I remember talking to a friend about it and we were like, what is the deal? Like, why is the common denominator with all of these violent acts? Now I'm not comparing what Will Smith did to something as horrible as a shooting, but, um, why is the common denominator always men? Why are men so aggressive? Why are they like, why, why is this happening? I mean, really like you're not seeing, you know, Susie from, you know, Oklahoma city go over here. Like, I'm just saying like, you know what I mean? And so I talked to Jay about it and he said something really interesting to me, which was, he said to me, you can't be what you can't see. So he talked about how young boys through video games, through movies, they see men acting in this way. And I thought that was really powerful. You can't be what you can't see. So think about like, not that young boys are turning into the Oscars and like counting down the days and having it in their calendar. But I'm just saying, it's like, what, what kind of message does this send to see their hero, you know, their superhero icon, you know, um, movie star Will Smith act this way to another person on a huge stage. You know what I mean? And I think I'm not going to get into this today, but I think that there's also like, you know, me, like I love a biology sexual for, for a social psychological moment. But I think that there's something to do even with the way men and women are different. You know, men are physically aggressive where women verbally will make you wish you were dead. Like, you know what I mean? Like we, I've talked about this before, but we were built differently in that way. So I think a lot of these things, um, play into that. However, why I talked to Jay about it is I said, I feel like men aren't, um, focusing on their mental health. Like they're hurting, they're angry and they're lashing out like this. Do you know what I mean? And so I feel like, because a lot of people looking at this now with Will Smith, they're like, are you like, is he okay? Like who, who just does this? Like now th that's the other thing too. This is where it's become a slippery slope. Cause I talk about men and their mental health. And this is an ongoing conversation about men not being able to feel like, you know, they can be vulnerable and now having, so like to prevent stuff like this, do you know what I mean? And this is where I feel like we're again in the climate of extremes because on one end of it, it's like, you know, the male bravado and masculinity and, and all this, you know, defending their woman's honor. And there's some truth in that, but then on the other end of it, and this isn't the popular thing to say these days, but I feel like we're babying men and it's not helping. It's like so far down this vulnerability train that we're destroying them. And it's coming out in a way that is like, you can see it literally even before hopping on to do this episode, there are so many studies and pieces in the last year or two about how less men are going to college, less men are finishing college, less men are getting out of their parents' household, less men are employed, less men are in the labor force. I mean, really all of these things. And so what does that say? I think that they're being babied. So where's the line? Like, where's the line? And this is like another thing too, the idea of like chivalry with toxic Ness, I don't even want to say masculinity. Like one of my viewers was like, I don't even want to call this toxic masculinity because this, what he did was not masculinity. Like you're an immature baby coward, but where's the line? You know what I mean? Like, where's the line of a self-assured, you know, man who will stand up for himself or his family or his woman or whoever it is. And then just being toxic like this. And it's the same idea as like the vulnerability. It's like, where's the line of like holding your shit together, but then also like being a blubbering mess. I clearly, 
you're like, is Will Smith okay? You know what I mean? And to the point where it's not helping them or people around them, it's like enabling them. So it's like, we have to find a happy medium. Like, yes, we need men to take care of themselves and their mental health and be vulnerable. But at the same time, if they're falling apart at the seams, they're not in the workforce, they're not getting out of their mom's basement. They're punching people, you know, slapping people at the Oscars. Like we also have a problem. And I think that they're being babied too much, honestly, is what I think it is. But well, if you can, because while I was on this, um, cause I'm going to start wrapping us soon. So while we're on this, I also interviewed, um, the cast of Godzilla. It was like a day after Jay Shetty. So again, let's just recap what a 360 moment, like watching this all play out now that I interview the Jay Shetty at a Jada Pinkett Smith red table event about men and violence now to see her and her husband, you know, also the fact that Jada hasn't, she put like one obscure Instagram post. I'm like, girl, for someone who literally tells us every time that she grazes against a man's penis, but now you're suddenly so quiet, like what is going on? It's so, the whole thing is so bizarre. Why wrap this little segment of like chivalry and toxicness? Like, nah, it's, if that were me, I like, there's a difference. You guys know, I love nothing more than a man who is like self-assured and confident and a protector, but this, I would be like, it's tacky again. It's, I'd be like, is there something that you like need to make up for in your life? Like something you have to prove. It's just so lame. So take note, men, not for me, not a turn on. Okay. Too far. So like, to me, a turn on would be maybe pull Chris aside afterwards, have a straight talking with him. And that I'd be like, babe, you and me later, let's go. But what he did so cowardly and again, narcissistic turn off done. Oh, so that's what I wanted to say is definitely if you can, I was going to play it in here, but the audio is so shitty that you might just be like, what, what's happening? Like, am I in Elon Musk's brain or not? Like you won't know what's going on because it's really hard to hear. But I talked to them at the Godzilla premiere. It was like a day or two after Jay Shetty, what I was saying before um, about this very thing. And I said, if Godzilla w- was a woman, would it be as violent? And it's so funny because some of them, like I interviewed Liza Koshi, who's a huge like YouTube star. And she talks about why men are lashing out because women were gaining more power. That's, you know, up to, you know, interpretation or argument there. Um, everyone had their different point of view, which is really cool. And this one guy really opened up to me. I'll never forget it. And Will Smith could take a note from this guy. And he said, I lost my dad to violence. Someone was trying to steal his car and they killed him. And he said, I, could you imagine someone telling me this on a red carpet of Godzilla? Nonetheless, it was such a beautiful moment, but he says, I had to look at him in court. Like, could you imagine staring him right in the face? And I said, did you want to kill him? And he said, no, I I felt sorry for him. I looked at him in empathy. You know, he ruined our lives or his, you know, basically his own life. And, you know, he's such a dark person. It takes to do something like that. It's like almost, I felt empathy for him. So, wow. So this is where I want to go with all of this guys is that we are in such a pivotal time right now. I mean, it's why I have the show cancel me baby, where I feel like, Free speech is a goddamn (laughs) battlefield. You know, love is a battlefield as Pat Benatar and Jordan Sparks would say, but it really is. It's become everybody. And it doesn't even matter if you're in media or not. Like my friends in corporate America and all sorts of, and all sorts of, you know, in schools and, and, you know, community sports, like everybody is afraid to speak up right now because free speech is really under attack. You know, I mean, hence again, why so many comics are freaking out right now, because this shouldn't be what it is, especially about a harmless joke, but we need to really, and especially Hollywood, like the fact that Hollywood gave him a standing O, yes, you have a lot of people speaking up, but in the moment gave him a standing O, let him sit back down, didn't take any action, didn't escort him out, didn't penalize him, no nothing. Yet these are the same people to go bananas over what are, in my opinion, rather minuscule things. And this is where we need to really get our priorities in check. Okay, here are some examples. Just really quick, I'm going to spit fire this shit like a Shrek dragon, okay? But do you remember when Scarlett Johansson, I believe she issued an apology, but she was cast as a trans person in a movie and she had, she got a lot of flack because she's not trans in real life. 
So she had to back out. And like I said, I think she issued an apology. Another example is Gina Rodriguez, who was singing along to a song with the N word, one of her favorite bands, one of her favorite songs. And again, same thing was semi canceled for a little while, had definitely tarnished. I feel like her reputation had to do a whole apology and everything for singing along to a song, right? Again, debatable. How about Ellie Kemper? Ellie Kemper is the actress who a photo of her from 22 years ago, okay, at a definitely a questionable party, like a party that's kind of similar to the Bachelor thing, like with the racist undertones, went viral again, keep in mind, from 22 years ago, okay, was crucified, was called the KKK queen, and had to come out and do an entire apology. Um, another one is let's see here, Gina Carano, who posted a meme. We've talked about Gina Carano before Sharon Osbourne, Sharon Osbourne, who defended on the view, her friend Pierce Morgan, because Pierce Morgan went after Meghan Markle saying she was a phony baloney, but we can't say that. So Sharon Osbourne basically got fired from the view for defending Pierce for saying that. Okay. Chris Harrison, we know that whole thing, you know, questioning something, defending something wasn't in poor taste. Absolutely. But these are all examples. And again, it just makes me think there are far more, I think, damaging and offensive acts out there than these. But say you are, say you are offended by these things. Okay. If you're offended by some of the things that I just listed, then you sure as hell be offended and upset by what you saw at the Oscars Sunday night. I mean, just think about that. If these people are taken off projects, are hit, um, you know, career-wise and reputation-wise and personally and professionally, if those people deserve that, Will Smith doesn't, just somebody make it make sense. Somebody make it make sense. And that's why we get into this whole thing of like speech versus actions. And I'm not saying that speech isn't important because it's so important. You know, I mean, it's why I've been over here rattling on for 42 plus minutes, however it's been, you know, speech is incredibly important. And it's especially why like speech can do really powerful things, you know, hate speech. It can make people feel feel bullied. And I mean, it's, it's very powerful too, but physically violence, it's such a different, it's visceral and it just hits such a different way. And I think that we need to start compartmentalizing the two and also prioritizing, I think, which ones deserve a little bit of accountability and discussion perhaps over others. I don't know, just an idea. And before we wrap, I just want to tell you this. I know that we keep things, you know, peppy steppy here over at Cancel Me Baby land most of the time, but it's sad because the last few days I've seen two acts, two, and this is in, this is just by accident, things I happen to stumble upon on my newsfeed, two acts of students, two separate students down here in South Florida, completely physically assaulting another student to totally different schools, to totally separate incidences in one, a student beat the crap out of another, gave them a concussion. They're on the floor. And the other one, a, a, a female student poured bleach on another female student. Like, so it just breaks my heart. And I'm not saying that what Will Smith did is, you know, perpetuating that, but it's also think about how it trickles down really think about that. When I see that, I'm like, that's so horrible. And then we see this. I just don't think that we should allow this behavior to perpetuate because look at how it's trickling down and affecting everyday people and kids. It's just really not okay. And so with that, I will say on that note, going and slapping a man who didn't deserve it across the face to defend my honor, honey, I ain't asking for it. I don't want it. It is anything but sexy, so take note.